Okay, so we are going to make a pocket shawl. So I'm using this yarn. It's cranberry black. Um, oops. 312 yards, which I'll end up using one and then a little bit more. And this is the scarfy yarn. Um, this is what it looks like. So you got your reds and your blacks and so where I put my yarn is I just have it down here by my feet. But I'm just using a Folgers container. It works really nice. Um, when I do the white yarn, which is the waist yarn, I'm actually going to put it in this last one. For the scarf itself, I'll use the middle one. But I want to make it just a little bit tighter, the waist yarn, and see if that makes a difference. So, let's put the waist yarn on. Okay, so remember... When we do this cast on, to start with, and I don't need a very big tail here, you go in front of the white peg, behind the next one, in front, behind, and you keep alternating, and back, in front, back, in front, back, in front. I like to do anywhere from, oh, I don't know, 8 to 10 rows. Of waist yarn. Um, oh, careful, I almost did it. I almost went behind both of them. Um, it's a preference. Um, you can do as many or few as you like. Um, now, see, I'm back here, and here's here's my white peg. Here's my white peg. So, I'm going to put this into the yarn guide, and I'm going to put it on that third um, thing, the third tensioner. And now, I'm just going to, that fell on the floor, not where I wanted it to, but oh well. Now, I'm just going to go around for... Ten rows. Now, I'm fortunate enough that my counter works. So, so far, anyways. So, I'm just going to go around for ten rows, and then I'll meet you back here. As you see, everything is going just fine. And yeah, I got the handle one tonight because. I'm just going to crank it out slowly. Now, I'm going to do about 325 rows. So, I'll meet you back here when I'm putting on the other yarn. Okay, so I'm back here at the beginning. The white yarn is behind this pink peg. Okay, now I'm going to start with my white peg. And I'm going to make not a real huge yarn cast on because I don't need it to be that big because we're going to crochet it the ends in anyways. Um, I'm going to bring this forward a little bit. Put my red down in there. Put it on the middle tensioner. Reset my counter. And now we want to make sure that it grabs here and it grabs here. And so far it's looking good. So I'll go around. I'm just going to kind of grab these two, just hold them not tight, just kind of loosely just so it, it grabs it, which it did. And then I 
I'll go around again. I'm just going to hold on to these. There we go. Some people tie these. I don't because the white's going to come off. So I am going to crank this around for 200, a total of two, no, 325 rows. 300. 325 rows. And then, uh, then we'll crochet the ends and I'll show you how you have to put it together. Because you actually, you're going to need two panels of this. But we're also going to make the scar uh, pockets for it. Okay? So I'm going to continue to crank around until I have 325 rows. Okay. So once again, we are at the end. I have 325 rows. I'm going to pull this black one out. Put it around this peg. Now, once again, I'm going to go into the very end one for tension. And I am going to do about 10 rolls of cast off. Okay. I want to make sure this gets done under there so it doesn't drop. Okay. So I'm at 325, so I just need about 10 rolls, give or take. Anywhere from 8 to 10, just so I have enough um, to catch everything. I just want to carefully make sure I don't drop anything. Alright, here we go. There's one roll. So I'm just going to make sure I don't drop anything on those ones. Alright, so good. Yep. Alright, so I'm going to do about 10 rows, and I'll meet you back here. Okay, we got our 10 rows. Sorry about that. We got our 10 rows. I'm going to put my white yarn in here. Now, I'm going to crank it around two times, and this baby's going to fall right off. So, this one just loosens everything or whatever it is it does now it's going to start coming up I'm going to hold this underneath here so that it doesn't fall through the hole and some there we go and it's all off okay now for the next step I need to um, tie in the sides or tie some stuff on the inside I did use one and let's see I used what was left on that other one and then another full one and this is what's left now I do have another skein to do the pockets or you could do the pockets in any color you want really so but I do have another skein of that yarn. Alright. I'll meet you back here. Okay, so I did add on. This is where I added on. I only tied it once because I want to make sure that I don't tie it too tight. Because then it will, like, buckle and do all kinds of weird things. So I have it tied once. Now I'm going to take my yarn. I'm going to go around. I'm going to go around one more time and then pull it tight. Okay. We want to make sure that there's no hole there. And I'm just going to tie one more double knot. Just, you know, you can tie as many as you want. You don't have to tie this many. That's just what I do. Now, I can snip that off. 
and this is on the inside so I just want to double check make sure um, I didn't that nothing has dropped so I'm just going to double check this and yeah, that looks pretty good now it's on to the crocheting part so what I like to do is see this is keeping okay. alright so what I like to do is um, make sure everything lines up no, these are our last two. One here, one here. Is that right? It's going to be on either side. Um, like I said, yeah. You don't have to do the stitch markers if you don't want to. Um, I do just so I make sure I grab those. I mean, some, it's easy to drop these last two stitches. So um, I just want to make sure they're there. And we'll bring this all down. I should just have two here, and I do one, two. So now, uh, where'd my crochet hook go? You can use whatever size you want. I'm using a four. You can see that it's a four millimeter. It's a Susan Susan Bates. There you go, four millimeter. Um. I don't know if I can get this down here any further. Let me move my camera down a little bit further. See if I can show you proper. Move it down a little bit. So, as you can see, I got my stitch markers right here. And I just kind of roll it together here a little bit. You want to make sure you only have two down here. And I'm just going to take my crochet hook. Got this one picked up. Now I'm going to pick up this one. And we just, you know, pull it through. Now, I ended here, so I'm going to start here. So now I'm going to go down here. Get that one. Pull it through. Go up to the top. So we're just crisscrossing basically. Now we're gonna come back down to this one. And we're gonna do this all the way to the end. So you just grab that loop and pull it through the other loop. Just like so. So it gives us a nice finished edge there. See? I'll do it again. Pull it. Ah. There we go. And then take this one here. This one, oops. I pulled my hook right out of there. I'm going to get that back in there. Now I split some thread. There we go. Okay. I'll pull this one and just pull it through. Loop it through down here. Make sure you're not getting that other one that's down underneath. You don't want to get that bottom one. You want to get this top one. That top one right there. And pull it through. And again. And pull it through. Alright, I'll meet you back here when I'm almost done. Okay. I'm near the end. I only have a few stitches left. I'll pull this one off. Now I must say, I did this in a tighter stitch, and I'm I'm liking the way the tighter stitch for the waist yarn works. Um, seems to uh, I don't know. It just seems to work better. I got that one, and here's the last one under this pink uh, stitch marker. And then I will take 
this black one loop it over and come through this loop and that will make the knot I can take these stitch markers up now and you don't have to have these kind of you know, there's many different things you can use for a stitch marker I mean I've seen people use bobby pins for heaven's sakes why didn't I think of that a lot cheaper but I did buy these in bulk so so now all we need to do is um, take the waste yarn off and I don't know what side this is from so this is this is the one I ended with <coughs> excuse me the one you end with is going to come off really super easy so I just take it off because I'll use this again for waste yarn probably when I do the pockets and we just take it and see I'm just I wind it around my fingers and then for so many and then I start wrapping it you know to make a to make a little ball um, like I said I will reuse this until I can't reuse it no more so I'll show you what this looks like when it's done I'll just keep taking it once in a while you gotta untangle these but that's okay so I'll show you what this end looks like okay so this is what it looks like when it's done it's got a nice nice edging on it and stuff um, I do have a second panel made I will show you how we're gonna stitch the we're gonna stitch two panels together essentially to make this pocket um, shawl uh, so let me get to well you want to make sure that again just kind of we want to make sure that the end uh, meets up properly so I'm just gonna keep going through this to make sure that oh I have a I don't know what that is I'm yarn that frayed and we want to make sure that this end again here's the white meets up like so because we don't want no twist in it so now that I know it's going to be like this I need to take the scarf you know don't start stitching right away until you know you have everything even because otherwise it's it's going to look like this it's going to be twisted and you know it'll be all wonky and you don't want that so now that I know that this is where this goes I will again straighten out the scarf like so make sure those are still on the end and I stretch it out a little bit here and then I'm just gonna keep bringing this up to make sure I have no twists in it and now I have no twists in it and that's pretty it is actually kind of pretty isn't it I'm just gonna roll this up here a little bit so once I do this oh, I need to flip it this way now I know that my two ends are there's one here and one right there so I will start stitching this and then um, we'll make some pockets and we'll put this together okay so this is the cast on edge <clears throat> this is the one that gets whatever because if you pull it it'll be a drawstring cast on you know you'll pull it closed so what we want to do is just find that top I hang on here and I just pull out so many Find where that top is, what's going to pull out. That's right here. And I just, I hold on to this back here so it doesn't try to, you know, pull it closed like a drawstring cast off. Because after you get this done, you get to the first round, and then you can just wind it around your fingers. And Put it into a ball so you just kind of 
<laughs> it rolls down so you gotta roll it out. I got this piece. I'm just gonna hold right here. Just pull it through all of these. I'll find the next one. There we go. Find another one. But yeah, just just pinch it and hold it back here while you pull it through those other loops. Because then you won't end up with I don't know, some kind of wonky mess of some sort. I'm almost back to the beginning. Almost. Is that the last one? Oh. It's going to come through. There we go. Now, we're just going to Take this like I did before. I start wrapping it around my fingers you know, so many times. No right or wrong number. And then I pull it off on my two fingers and I start wrapping it into a ball. So I can use it again for waist yarn until it gets all you know raggedy and ratty and stuff and then I'll then I'll get a new one. So that's all you do. Next up, piecing them together. Okay, I got both panels done. Remember, I did two of these. Now I'm going to show you how I'm going to stitch it together. I'm going to use a contrasting color just so you can see what I'm doing, but once you pull it together, um, you won't see it anyways. So, I'm going to go down here at this very corner one. And I'm going to go from the back into the front. This is what's called, um, I think it's a mattress stitch or something like that. I'm going to leave a little tail here. Then I'm going to come over to this side. Or to the next one. I'm going to go back to front. Okay. Now, this is going to be a shawl so we want to make sure it's good and sturdy doesn't come apart so we're gonna go through this one again same one we're gonna go back to front again and then I'm gonna come back to this one and I'm gonna go back to front again make sure you got all of it Right there. Right there. Right there. So now we can get started going up. So you want to make sure, see, you can see this V here. A V. This is what we're working into. The black, well, it's a little bit harder to see. Once we get up here, we'll be able to see it a little bit better. And turn this a little bit. But you can see the V's. V, V, V. I'm going to turn this a little bit. Because you want your V's going the same way. There we go. There. Now, we're going to come back on this next stitch. Right here, is that V? We're going to come back, back to front, back to front, and then I'm going to cross over here. I'm going to find my next one, which is right here. You see the V? Back to front. Okay. Now I'm going to find my next one over here. I just went in that one. Oops. Now I need to come into this one. Make sure you pick up both loops. Both loops. So, and then 
Not this one right here. And remember, we want to go back, back, the front. Now again, we're going to go right here, back, the front, back, the front. I'm going to get my next one. Black is hard to see. Back to front. I'll go up a few and then I'll show you how it'll just pull right in. We went in that one, so we need okay, V. Back. Almost looks like a tennis shoe lace. And then back. Keep one I grab down lower. Back to front. Okay, this phone stand is gonna drive me nuts. I'm gonna have to get some tacky glue or something. Or tacky poster tack or whatever it's called. So now that we've got we've gotten up a little bit. Oh, don't want to lose my needle. So if you take these and you just pull this. Uh, just pull it. Don't pull too tight, you break it. But you pull it. Now bottom one you might not be able to get to disappear completely but here see you can't even really see that I used the white just you know go up you know five six stitches or so and you pull it tight and look this appears can't even see that I'm using white Isn't that cool and then you'll have a nice nice seam on the front and the back okay so See if this will push it down. I think I'm going to have to use my poster tack on there on the bottom when I'm using this one. So again, so I ended over here. So i got to come back over here and find where I left off, which is this one. You see that? If I can get it closer. Oh, that's too close. So we want to come grab grab this V right here. Uh, grab this V right here. And we're always going back to front. Now we'll come back over here. Make sure I'm not in the same. I said the black is funky. So again, back to front, like so, and again over here, and you see my V, coming in the back, go in front, so yeah, this is a mattress stitch, and it doesn't matter usually what kind of yarn you use, because it'll just pull in and it'll hide. i uh, get this next black one. I said the black is harder to see. So back to front. And we got that many, so if I just pull. See? It just all disappeared. It's a magic. It's magic. That's what it is. Alright, I'm gonna finish doing this. And then I am gonna make a pocket. And then, uh, then I'll show you how we did that one, okay? So we'll start with this for right now. Just remember, you're always going in the back loop, back to front, back to front. You're like crisscrossing, almost like you were lacing a shoe or tying a shoe or something. So leaves a really nice, sturdy, real nice, sturdy seam and stuff. So, 
yeah and then this one you won't see in the end because I'm thinking of crocheting a small border around it I don't know yet I haven't decided so I'm gonna keep going with this white yarn since it, I'm not I'm not trying to take it out and then I'll go on with the other yarn later so I will see you when it's time to put the pockets on I hope you enjoy this project okay do you want me to show that to you one more time way over there remember see the V right here I don't know if I'm focusing V front back to front back to front and then over here we'll pick up this black right here back to front you can see the V back to front and just pull through okay again back to front so you're almost crossing like actually yes, like I don't know making a Z or something lacing up a pair of shoes and we go back to front okay so just keep doing that and I'll see you back here when I'm ready to do the pockets.